Welcome to The Hopening, the place where hope is happening, with your hosts Fran Cadron and Marina Teran Manery. For more information about Fran and Marina, or to apply to be a guest on the show, please go to our website, www.hopening.com. The Hopening is for informal purposes only and is based on the research of your hosts, Fran and Marina. They, as well as their guests, are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from this podcast, which is not intended to replace any professional medical advice or care by medical professionals you are currently utilizing. Welcome to The Hopening, the place where hope is happening. This is episode 97, and Marina and I are thrilled to welcome a guest who is so knowledgeable in a topic that every female in the world will need to know about sooner or later, and hopefully it's sooner. Alison Prest is a professional hypnosis practitioner, menopause specialist coach, and menopause champion. Yay! With Menopause Expert Group. Her area of expertise is working with women, particularly those in peri and post menopausal phases. Her aim is to help women understand their bodies, minds, and souls as they grow, go through natural transformations into menopause and beyond. Together, Allison and her clients break down barriers and challenge outdated beliefs about aging. So thank you, Allison, for joining us from Ottawa, Canada today. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. (laughs) Wonderful. Such a fantastic topic that is so applicable to all of us. And, you know, Alison, I grew up dreading menopause because that's the story I was told. So what is your story? What, What brought you to be here today to... You, I believe you are still perimenopausal yes, and I am. To, to niche in, in this fantastic topic. So um, tell us about your background. Well, I have to say that um, when I, I didn't understand what was going on in my own body. And when I began to sort of feel some changes and we're talking in my early forties, I, I began to question, but I didn't really get the answers I was looking for. And it was this sort of overwhelming feeling, more the emotional and the mental piece. And I found what was working for my my stress relief before was no longer working for me. And I remember approaching doctors and and I'm just trying to be like, what's happening? What is going on? This isn't normal for me. And again, power to doctors, but they, it was very much a, here's an anti-anxiety pill. Here is, you know, you know, options that you have. These are the physical changes. You're getting older. They didn't even use the word menopause. It's like, you're just getting older. And I found, I was like, oh, okay. And the more I was heading into that phase of perimenopause, the more I became curious on there's got to be more than just an anti-anxiety pill for this because it, the anti-anxiety pill wasn't even working. And I was also noticing just, it's just so much change going on and I could not find any support to save my life that wasn't an HRT option. And again, HRT, it, it's good for some, but not for all. And I was struggling and then I decided to... um become a life coach. And I did that during the um, the pandemic. I found it was a nice time to be able to just pause and, and go back into myself and say, okay, if I can't find the support, a lot of women aren't finding this support. How can I help women? How can I help this community get to a place where they feel comfortable with the aging process? And so I started to dig and I became a life coach and then I became a hypnosis therapist uh, through the National Guild of Hypnosis. And I just took my own journey and curious questions on how can I support women? And I ran into this, oh, 
uh, let's talk about menopause. Let's look at all the symptoms of menopause and it's not just hot flashes and it's not just night sweats. And, you know, it's lots and lots of mental and emotional changes because our hormones are changing. And I then took the journey and I started to niche and I studied and I became a menopause specialist coach. And I joined hands with uh, the menopause expert group and was trained in their area. So I now feel confident and great about being able to support women on this journey and that mental, emotional piece of it. And I also have a 20 year fitness background. So I also can add that movement piece. And I want women to feel positive about aging. I really, really don't like the word anti-aging. I think it needs to be we're pro-aging and Um, that you're not alone on this and embrace it because we're all going to go through it. So why are we framing it so negatively? Let's put a positive light on it and let's travel the journey together. Let's create community. Women are really good at creating community and circles. And when we all join hands, our voices will be heard more as well. And I think that's what needs to happen. We need to start talking and I hope to create more and more community of women who are going to start talking about it, embracing it. So it becomes generational. So my daughters won't feel uncomfortable getting older and they'll know what symptoms are menopause and perimenopause and go and journey through it and have more support in place for them. So Marina, your mom uh, had a difficult time going through menopause. Am I right? Well, my mom had a hysterectomy at a very young age. So she was one of those free cases where she had a sterilization, Mm -hmm. but still got pregnant. And then after that, they said full hysterectomy. So she had a full hysterectomy. I would say she was in her 30s and with a lot of HRT. But, you know, times have changed. As you are talking, Alison, it makes me think because... When my mom was my age, she she decided already she's old. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I just walked six kilometers this morning. My mom would never have done that. Yeah. She was too old to do it then. She slowed down. I'm not. And it's it's a complete different mindset. And I think this awareness that you are key in bringing to people, you don't have to act old when you go yeah. through menopause. I mean, exercise is a vital part of my life. Yes. Sorry, Frank, so, back to you. Yeah. What I'm wondering, Allison, is I'm about the science, right? I love the science of the body. So what are what happened? What you know, what suddenly happens when women get into their mid to late 30s, early 40s with the chemicals that are going through the bodies that are supposed to be, you know, clearing out the brain fog, keeping our bones healthy, keeping our muscle mass. What's going on with our chemicals? It's it, it's hormonal. It's hormones. And I think that is the it's learning more about our hormones and all and how important they role they play in regulating our systems from our emotional state, our mental state from even things as um, our, our tissues, it, it's all tied together. And so when you take very um, important hormones like estrogen and they begin to, to diminish and our bodies are trying to adjust and trying to figure it out, they, it's like they're working going, what's going on? And so we do begin to lose that, we get brain fog and we get more emotional, but also our joints hurt and our our bones ache. And we're wondering to ourselves, why is this happening? And there, it, it is all about our hormones. It, it really is. It's a hormone issue. And some people ride that storm beautifully and others don't. And so there is the science. And yes, that's why I always say like, you must talk to your doctor. Let's find out what you can do about these things. HRT, so hormone replacement therapy, is a fantastic piece of science that can help women transition through. And it has to be done earlier if you are going down that route. The later we wait, it sort of gets to the point where there is no point. (laughs) 
<laughs> you might as well, but you need to start talking about it and debunking some of the past science that has put fear into women because before, I mean, science evolves, right? It's, it's no longer our mom's HRT <laughs> or our grandparents' HRT. It's new science, but talk to your doctor and then you can make that choice. Because there's also, I believe, in the mindset as well that if HRT is not your choice, not what you would like to do, absolutely, there are other ways. There's holistic ways that your mind is such a powerful tool that you can begin to, okay, get the tools to start to regulate your feelings, your emotions, how to address like, and to recognize, oh, I know what this is. I'm going to do some breath work. I know what this is. I'm going to step away. And nutrition, another piece I would say is so important is what we put into our bodies and recognizing that there is lots of fantastic food that has your phytoestrogens and great nutrition that can also help women balance out those hormones in a more natural way. So really the science is, it is all about our hormones and nobody wants to talk about it. And it's not just estrogen that's diminishing, right? Your testosterone, there's so many that are just going down and we, that's why our libido starts to slow down as well. There's just so many things and no one talks about it. And mm -hmm. I just think that, that it's, it really, and when we say a aging, it's sort of like, well, no, menopause is a hormone thing. <laughs> and yes, we're getting older, but it's, it, they don't need to be this, they don't need to be on the same, on the same track. I have a heart because like Marina's, mom some people are thrusted into this chemically due to many like illnesses and i would not say someone in their 30s is old <laughs> right so again it's hormonal menopause is hormonal and then it's how you look at your age as a dope is a completely different subject and then but they seem to be put in the same basket so Alison, I was in a situation where seven years ago I was diagnosed with hormone positive breast cancer. Yeah. Where estrogen and progesterone, progesterone became my enemy. Yes. And I was put on a drug to completely strip my body of it, of specifically estrogens. And um if you think of the back then, I don't know what the current statistic is, but one out of eight women would mm -hmm. develop yeah. breast cancer and most of them would then be estrogen or progesterone related. So how do you deal with that? I was told from day one, you can never do HRT. And mm -hmm. honestly, I am so blessed. And I think my mind is right because I have no symptoms of menopause anymore. Nothing. I honestly, it was difficult going through the treatment, but after that, I just, I'm, I'm doing fantastic. And uh, so how do you deal with that? How do you deal with women who cannot do HRT, who become, in a sense, almost afraid of hormones because hormones make them sick? I agreed. I am in the same boat. And I have found that that comes then, you must, you must really do a lot of research and look into nutrition and mm. mindset, different types of modalities of how to um, handle these emotions that come with it. So that's where I think working with coaches, working with therapists, working in hypnosis, tapping, anything that is more holistic approach to be able to say, okay, I can take this on, and but I'm gonna do it using mother nature's tools and really making sure talking to professionals, I would say more in the nutrition, the dietitian, and just so you learn more about what these foods have and what it is you need, anti-inflammatory foods, and making sure you understand what is going on in your body. Where are my issues? What are, what am I experiencing? Every woman experiences menopause in a unique way and finding out, okay, and you can get your blood work done. I did to make sure, okay, where am I, where am I at? And what am I missing? 
and then sort of going, okay, what nutrition, like I was low in vitamin D, like just certain things that you're like, okay, so how can I take nutrition and movement, body movement, and how can I take other modalities that will help my mindset, yoga, breath work, all those beautiful pieces and bringing it in together to create my own unique program that I can actually go through this. It might seem challenging at first because it really is a, a shift in a lot of people's lifestyle. But once they buy into it, once they see that you can go through this in a natural way with different supports, then I do think that that is a fantastic choice for individuals who cannot take HRT but need to ride the storm. There's, there's, you have to go through it, menopause. There's sort of no choice, mm -hmm. you, right? And not be afraid that to, and acceptance, I think accepting, no, I cannot do HRT and that's not the end of the world. Now let's start researching what support groups in menopause, what type of food can I eat? And let's go down the natural way of doing it. So what is the link between estrogen and inflammation? Estrogen and inflammation. So again, estrogen is a, a hormone that is helps regulate that inflammation in our bodies. And when it, it's throughout our whole body, and once it begins to diminish, you'll notice a lot more of signs like joint pain, arthritis, inflammation within the body, that estrogen is like this beautiful magic hormone that we're blessed with. And it is, but it kind of sets your whole body on fire <laughs> when it begins to go and, and diminish. And that's when I think as women, we need to click in and go, okay, I need to now really think about what I'm putting in my body because estrogen is on its way out. Thank you for doing your job and doing what it's needed. It's done. It's, it's, it's run its course. Now I need to make sure I'm adding that nutrition piece to start working on diminishing the inflammation and in a, from a different angle, but estrogen plays a key role in keeping our, everything inside our body regulated. It is such a powerful powerful hormone that I really do think a lot of people don't understand it's tied to everything function in our body right it's there's not estrogen receptors in every cell of our body right absolutely so whether it's the heart or whether it's the bones or the muscles or the kidneys or the it's estrogen receptors I mean everywhere so uh, I can imagine what, you know, like, you know, because I'm very good at that, what happens within the body when there's not the estrogen that we've been used to, or maybe we get flooded with estrogen and then there's nothing for six more months, right? Exactly. I mean, we, we've all had friends that, you know, had six months without a period and then suddenly it's like goosh and, you know, like the, your, all your clothing is is wet with blood, like yes. you know, rea the reality, the lovely realities of menopause. My own mom, you know, my Marina knows my story, but my mom had 11 children just back to back to back to back. And then she didn't, right? She thought she was in menopause, all of, right? All of that, you know, safe. And then my mom and dad go to Jamaica on their first holiday away. And my mom gets pregnant, right? As a baby at 46. And our little brother was down, had Down syndrome. So oh, there's lots of stuff that are menopause related um, mm -hmm. that we don't always think about. Um, we don't. And I also want to sort of clarify the difference between peri and then menopause and post. I think everybody thinks menopause it's just, like, it's just such a big word like it's but you are perimenopause and you can start in your 30s if it's not obviously you know forced upon you chemically or from operation hysterectomies and it's a slow little creep in and creep in and creep in but menopause itself is an actually a one day event it is the anniversary the 365 day without a period yeah. that day is your your menopause day. It almost sounds like your birthday. That's your menopause day. And every day after that is post-menopause. Right. But we never know. We don't and, know. It's and like we don't that. know. And I do honestly believe you get to the point where you've gone months and months without a period. You're like, come on, like, let's just. Right. So there is going. this, 
there's this popular belief that um okay you are now in menopause which is actually not true you're post menopause right -menopause. and then a lot of people will say but i have symptoms of menopause is that then perimenopause so symptoms of menopause it's perimenopause so anything before okay. that date perimenopause and right. obviously the more your estrogen and your testosterone and your hormones are beginning to d- diminish and change and go up and down, the more symptoms you're going to start to experience getting closer to that date. But as long as you're not like when you're not having that period, that 365 day anniversary is your menopause day. I yeah. always like to try to think of it positive. It's like my birthday. I will have a menopause day and I think I should celebrate that because it is the end of something, but the beginning of another phase post menopause. And a lot of women in post menopause will still have experiences and still have uh, symptoms of perimenopause, but they do usually subside a little bit at slowly getting a little bit better. You start to feel a little bit better and then it gets better and better. Some women again, will continue to experience things like hot flashes and night sweats. But most women on the other side of it, they're they're physically starting to feel better. It's like coming out of the fog. It's coming up and going, oh, take a deep breath. Let's embrace these crone years. I am now post-menopause. I am in a new phase of my life. And that's where I'm trying to bring, it's like, have your menopause day be like a birthday. It's a new, it's a birth of a new phase and you get to bring wisdom and knowledge with you. You get life experience and man, can you ever become more powerful and empowering to others when you're in that phase? Because you no longer, you, you, your, your mothering years are, you know, they're done. You've done, you, you've done a great job. Now let's try something. That was, now let's be wise. And knowledge and share it with the rest of the world and share it with the next generation. I think it sounds like a great way to enter post-menopause to celebrate the day you are in menopause. So you're in a group called Girls Gone Strong. What is that about? So Girls Gone Strong is, um, it is definitely, it is a fitness, physical fitness, um, industry and it's a it's an academy that um fantastic and basically that academy created one of a kind certification for menopause specialists for people in that in our fitness world because it is not something that is very common a lot of us can become personal trainers we can be pre post menopause um pre post natal um, there's just so many different elements, but menopause is one that is becoming a hot topic and they created a fantastic certification that touches on everything on how to work with women going through the phases of perimenopause into postmenopause. How do you work with those individuals in, in a fitness? How do you create programs that fits their needs, that understands their symptoms and it, it made a great lens for me to look at it even though I know I am a woman going through it to train someone else their journey is unique to mine and how to really coach them properly so they feel successful in that world they begin to move their bodies and they understand the importance of moving our bodies through all phases of our life and how it will be a beautiful strength in the mind exercise helps your brain your mind your emotions and it also keeps you moving into your your aging years and the importance of it because muscle atrophy is part of menopause and how can we build programs that are also to their liking and you know not everyone wants to do boot camp and to create programs that really do feel good in their bodies so girls gone strong is where i sort of turn to to get that certification to become a menopause specialist in the fitness piece of it. And I, I loved the program. It was all online. It came with great resources and a great support group. And I just, I just loved adding that to my toolbox. So I am, I'm the perpetual turn everything to a positive kind of person. And even this phase in my life, I'm definitely postmenopausal. 
I love it. I love it. So I had once had a client and I want to talk to you about mindset because she, um, and have a conversation with her and I would say, how are you doing today? Oh, I hate being in menopause. And I, I said to her, no, 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 no. I want you to every day go find something positive about mm-hmm. it. What you love about menopause, start to focus on that. And it really changed in no time. And so tell me, what what is the positive mindset? Because we all grew up in it was a curse to be in menopause or to go through mm-hmm. menopause and and no it wasn't it was like no. listen it's over it, it doesn't have to be like that and how important is mindset mindset i think is the key it's the key to it to finding happiness during this phase and it is to truly i love what you just said i love find what's positive about this there is it is not the end of something. It's the beginning of something. It's looking at it as, now I do also understand that I part of perimenopause is grieving the loss of your menstrual cycle because we identify with it. We, from the time we got our periods, it's part of our identity. And a lot of us got it, what, 12, 13? Right. And so by the time you're getting to this phase, it's been it's been the majority. It's been your life. And so embrace and accept the grievance of that piece being gone. But look at the door that is now opening. You have it's freedom. There is freedom attached to menopause. Absolutely. And it, it's it's a, and, and of our bodies like we no longer are dictated <laughs> to this monthly cycle holding us accountable for for reproduction and it is i find it freeing to know that there's just so much more ahead of me and it isn't my grandma's menopause and it's not my mom's menopause this is mine my unique journey and mindset is key it's finding the silver lining in everything that's happening and looking at the positive of it and there was a, some, I, a, a very close friend of mine made this beautiful analogy about like hot flashes, our bodies heating up. And because of the age we're at, she says, oh, I always look at it as, you know, the younger generation having babies and you as the elder, you now keep the babies warm. Like you hold them that 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 a hot flash is actually meant to be you ha- you know holding the young ones and keeping them warm and in your space and and providing heat and and that is and i thought oh my gosh that's a beautiful way of looking at a hot flash <laughs> so her mindset is oh no it's a beautiful thing it 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 does it has its purpose everything has its purpose it's yeah. uh, it's beautiful <laughs> so when you um work with a client and you do hypnosis with them uh, tell us about the process or what, like, what would, what might they come in with, what underlying issues and uh, how, what do you do to, and how do they leave and what, are, what is their change mindset? Like, tell us about a success story. So how I would, l- I love to approach menopause and hypnosis is I, and I add the coaching piece is I very clearly create the safe container for my client and so we have that moment of this is your journey this is your menopause where are you at where do you feel you need that support because they need to understand not everyone is going to need the same support and I'm here to uniquely talk with them and from that point it's a lot of times it is there's there's a few different I've noticed sort of trends A lot of it is anxiety and emotions and trying to handle those pieces that are part of our mind as it's changing and our our bodies are changing and the acceptance, body acceptance is another one I really like to tackle because women going through the change themselves are trying to hang on to the past and they're trying to embrace the future, but they don't know how to kind of merge the two together. And so again, we will work on we like I like to coach it down to get to that the golden nuggets that we really need to focus on and then create tailored hypnosis for each individual 
to tackle what their needs are. If their needs are at body acceptance, we're going to go on that journey together and we are going to create, making sure we're creating a space for them to express the why. So they figure out, why do I feel this way? Where was this? Where is this coming from? And replanting that seed and let's nurture that seed on positive going into this next phase in life. And our bodies changing is a wonderful thing. And these are the benefits of, of acceptance. It really comes down to, I need to accept this aging process. And how can I do that? Let's create a, it creates the positive mindset. So we do tailor every hypnosis session based on their needs in their menopause and what they are requiring. Again, we also will run into stuff like your, your regular stuff, like the, the weight, right? The, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with weight, nutrition. And again, I can also take my coaching. So I have that wellness fitness background and I can create programs that way. But then we'll work on the hypnosis piece, like for accountability. Mm-hmm. And that way they, you know, they're going to tie into, I want to, I want a fitness program. I want to eat better. Absolutely. I can help you there. But we also need to take their mindset so they actually are accountable and they work towards those goals. So it really is tailored to each individual. Again, the women I have worked with after a session, and I'm sure you ladies that know this, after a hypnosis session, people just feel this weight lifted. It's this beautiful, they feel so relaxed and so almost like in that moment, you feel the aha acceptance moment and they just leave with just a more open mind and more like skipping their step, that relaxation, that acceptance. And then of course, you know, I put them out into the world and again, they'll come back if we need to work on different things and continue in that sort of ebb and flow. But I do always find that's like the the best part of this job. (laughs) Or I like think of it as a calling is to watch women leave with just hope. And a sparkle in their eye and feeling this lift. It's like you can see the lift of the weight off of them and and acceptance and feeling powerful. I love it. It's the best part. (laughs) I'm a firm believer that our thoughts are so extremely important. And our mind's job is to make our thoughts real. Our body Mm -hmm. is just following what we think. And if we think, oh, you cannot help but to gain weight in menopause, yeah, it will happen. So then that is that is what I think why what you offer, what Fran and I offer is so powerful for people going through that. No, you don't have to wait through menopause. You don't have to go through that curse that your mother talked about. It's it can be a walk in the park. It can be a fantastic, exciting phase in life. I became a grandmother two and a bit years ago, and it's such a blessing. And I'm so grateful because oh, one of the biggest gifts that I could get in my life was to become a grandma. And I, it's just this phase in life. What a beautiful, beautiful phase of wisdom yes. and and just... <laughs> freedom it is free and then I always giggled at myself when I went through the hot flash stage I live in Canada a hot flash was the biggest gift for me ever I didn't need winter pajamas I was never no, cold at no. night it was wonderful <laughs> so yeah just a fact on that I- you know, Marina, I'm jumping off of that, I remember being in the classroom, right? And I'm at the front of the class teaching, and then I would feel it. It would feel it come from oh, the stomach, right. comes so from the way. stomach and goes up. And I'm like teaching, teaching, walking, opening the windows, <laughs> beside the window for a bit. Oh, that feels better. Yes. Close yeah. the window, <laughs> keep on teaching, right? It's just women, right? Women are amazing. We just I keep the out. window open in the dead of winter. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> still do that I love it yeah, you know, just like, yeah. fresh air it's fresh air it's good for us <laughs> and the, the thing is with men men usually like the room colder anyway exactly. right so yeah. there's some more together time yeah so um uh what we usually do at you know when we get close to wrapping this up is we ask you about your own Words of hope, like what kinds of words of hope can you give our viewers 
um, who may be worried about menopause or worried about uh, hormone replacement therapy or whatever, what kinds of words of hope can you give the half the half of the population that will sometime go through this or maybe have or or um, or maybe are afraid of it? Words of wisdom. <laughs> Ultimately, when you're not alone on this journey, there are many women who are open to having this conversation and ask questions, continue asking questions, be curious about it. Don't be afraid of it. Be curious. I think when you walk into the world, into different phases of our life with more curiosity, you open your mind a little more because it's a curious question, not coming from fear. So my words of wisdom to women is just be curious a little bit more and lead menopause with a curiosity and then it should lead more to a positive outcome because when you're curious about something it'll lead you down a much more positive path beautiful thank you Alison. and how can people get hold of you they can get a hold of me they can um, look me up i have my website it is www.soulfulflow.ca they can also find me on Instagram. So I am at soulful dot, I'm at soulful dot flow dot coach. <laughs> so can you spell Insta. that for us, please? Soulful. Yes. So it is S O U L F U L F L O W dot C A. And they can okay. contact me there anytime. And I, I just Google Allison Prest. I will pop up. Oh. That's what I did. Yeah, <laughs> that works. And Allison, do you work online as well as in person? Yes. Most Fantastic. of my clients are virtual um, from all walks of life, all across the, the country, all across the globe. So absolutely just give me a shout and I'm happy to work with women one-on-one -on, -one on a virtual platform. Fantastic. Yeah. And you know, the, the great thing is about that, Allison, you, you have that background, you have <clears throat> the kinesiology and you have the physiology and you know what's going on in the body. So I think that that would be even more helpful because uh, you've got that basis of um, fact, right? The basis of facts, as well as the the mind uh, the ability to help suggestibility and actually one, one last little thing you know I hadn't had a hot flash night sweat in years and this is how suggestible I am when I started reading up about menopause for this interview I had like night sweats two nights in a row <laughs> mindset Fran mindset, mindset. exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here, Alison. It was amazing you. for giving us hope, even in menopause. It's wonderful. Or perimenopause. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. All phases of menopause. There's hope. Yeah, there is indeed. And thank you, Fran. Thank See you. you. <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody, for watching. If you like us, subscribe. And we will be back next week bringing you more hope.